Repasting has become quite popular in the news because thermal paste does wear out and not all manufacturers use great thermal paste to apply it correctly. This is a 2015 MacBook Pro that I have in for fixing and I might as well give it a shot and see if it improves anything. Um, I'm not going to run a full suite of tests on it, but I'm going to run a couple select ones and just see if it makes a difference. So right now I have Blender re rendering the BMW sequence and I'm going to be looking at two main things. So temperature is limited to 99C on this chip um, and we're looking at frequency and power because power and frequency are pretty much linked together on this chip. It's a CPU only workload, the GPU is doing almost nothing. Um, and we're going to CPU load is pinned, and we're also going to look at the time it takes to render. And we're going to see if doing a repasting will actually help on this system. I don't know the history behind it, what environments it's been used at, but we're going to find out. So this chip here is rated at 2.5 gigahertz. Um, it's the second tier up MacBook Pro from 2015. And it's turboing up to about 2.8 right now. And we can see it starts quite a bit higher and then slowly ramps back down. It kind of goes between 2.7 and 2.8. And the power consumption is about 41 watts. If everything goes to plan, we should see that 40 some watts. And it's dipping down again. Um, but we should see that 41 watts, maybe go up to like 45. Because that would mean that there was a bit of better thermal connectivity to the heatsink, more of it can get in here, which means you can put more power and clock it higher. So let's go in and take it and do a repasting. We're also going to blow out any dust if there's any, and just see if there's any other possible issues. Looking at the inside of the laptop, we can see it's really not that dusty. I've seen much worse in laptops, but we're going to just give it a blowout anyways with the air compressor, and then we're going to do the repasting and see what the paste job looks like under this. The heat sinks are now unscrewed so I can easily remove it and take a look at it. So we can see eh, it's okay, it's definitely not great. It's still fairly liquidy so it hasn't completely dried out. The other thing that surprised me is how tiny the actual like heat vents are. But apparently it's enough to dissipate what looks like about 40 watts of heat, which isn't bad, but still this is less than it should be. Let's clean this up and put a new coat on and see what it can do. I've gone and assembled this after doing the repasting actually for the second time because it was doing worse after the repasting. Um, and yeah, as you see now, the clock speed's already down to 2.6 and it goes down even farther. Um, yeah, this actually does worse. So originally it took about 4 minutes 15 seconds to render, and now it's at 4.45 to 4.30, depending on the exact run. I'm using this thermal paste, which is really cheap. Chinese stuff about for like three bucks and took a month to get shipped from, it from me from the mainland. Uh, I went and ordered some Arctic Silver 5, so in the next update I'm going to put that in and see how big of a difference. So it's like MX4 I think exactly. The last demo paste application really didn't go well because I used cheap Chinese stuff that I had here. Now I'm going to be using some proper stuff, which is one of the better um, MX4 from Arctic Cooling. And let's see how it goes. And now we have the Arctic MX4 in there, and we're going to see how the results go. So, first thing we notice is the temperature now is only like 98 to 99 degrees. With the CPU load still maxed, we notice the frequency is sitting at 3.0 gigahertz, sitting now well at 3. It is still heating up a little bit, it seems, but it seems to have now the power is at 48 watts instead of the low 40s or the high 30s. So I'm going to give it those 7 bucks I spent on the MX4. If this was my actual laptop and not just a test system, that's well worth the money if you're doing rendering. We'll see what the render times look like at the end. But right from here, going from an average of like 2.7, 2.8 to 3 gigahertz, that's a reasonable improvement for 7 bucks. And here's our result. So a stock, we're getting about 4 minutes 15 seconds. We're getting about 4 minutes 30 with the cheap Chinese paste that I tried. And we're getting about um, 3 minutes 59 seconds with the MX4. So replacing it with good thermal compound definitely makes a noticeable difference. This is just a CPU only workload. If I was throwing a CPU and GPU workload in that's mixed, we'll see even bigger results. Because that puts a much harder thermal strain on the system. And ballistically for the 7 bucks that this thermal paste costs, it's definitely worth it. Especially if you have an older system that started to wear out paste wise. Cheap paste has its um, spot in the market for stuff like testing systems where you want to just throw it together and you want something that's better than nothing, but if you care about performance on something like this, spend the extra couple bucks. 
Thanks for watching and subscribe for more computer videos like this in the future.